Hey y'all, just I'm coming back again. I'm trying to tell you the enemy does not want me to get this video out here. So we on part two. And again, I said that I'm going to read to y'all um, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Do not lie with men as one lies with women. This is distasteful. Do not have sexual relationships with an animal and defile yourself with it. A woman must not present herself to, to an animal to have sexual relationships with it this is perversion do not defile yourselves in any of these ways because this is how the nations that i am going to drive out before you became defiled even the land was defiled so i punished it for its sin and the land vomited up its inhabitants but you must keep my decrees and my laws now this is the thing i always say this that when that sin that spirit, that homosexuality spirit comes in, it doesn't just sit in the corner. It takes over. So I'm going to give you a prime example. Now, the same sex have come. Now, men dress like women, women dress like men, boys. I mean, it's so confused now. I'm going to give you a prime example. There's a man who was dressed as a woman. And he was caught, I think, still in purses or something. But because they associated him with being a woman, they put him in an all-woman jail. So he in jail, and he say he was being fondled and raped by women because he's the only male in there that was dressed as a woman. So he got an attorney to sue because he said, y'all knew I was a man. See the confusion in it? It's so confusing. And this is what the enemy wants to do. But this is the thing. If you speak about the sin, because Kim, Kim Burrell clearly said, said that she does not hate the person. She hates the sin. And I'm going to give you all a little background, too. I was raised in a church all my life. But from the ages from 8 to 25, I want to say, I was in a church and I found out that my pastors were, in fact, lesbians. I found that out when I was 25. And I'm going to tell you, I, I wonder why the church never grew. It never grew. People came and gone. And yeah, you know, back in the 90s, women wore short haircuts and stuff like that. And I, I still love them. I do. Because I've known them when I was younger. But... The way I found out was just a such, a, it just broke my heart. And a lot of people, and it's especially like a lot of the young um, um, teenagers and in the early 20s, when they saw that, that their shepherd was, was doing this type of stuff and at the same time trying to preach, it led them in a, um, into destruction in their lives. They felt like, shoot, you ain't following the word. I'm not going to do that either. Got the stealing people on drugs. I mean, it was it was horrible. And so, um, and the way I found it out was through my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law. He said, Ramona, you know they homosexuals. And I said, what? I went to my mother. My mother never joined the church. And I said, Ma. And then, then I remember a new woman had came and joined the church. And then, then I saw her on the streets. And she was like, she left the church. And... I didn't, I was too embarrassed and didn't want to say anything. And she told me that her pastor came from North Carolina and, and saw my pastors and said, the reason why your church is not growing is because of y'all, because y'all, y'all lesbians. I went back to the church. Um, even after I found, I don't, I went back and I saw, I just saw what was not right in that church. And God told me to leave that church. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. So when people sit up here and talk about you just hating, no. I have, like I said, I had a family member that just passed away that I mourned for a very long time for his death. Okay. And I used to talk to him. Matter of fact, he would come around with, um, his friends and these were these were handsome guys and they were in the lifestyle and I remember talking to one of his friends and he was talking about how he wanted to change and how he wanted to be delivered and I would tell him look God loves you 
He loves you. But you got to get away from the people that's trying to drag you into it. You have to get away and, and go to God. Repent. Talk to him. He can change you. And he just started bawling out crying. You don't know that what the people have gone through. And um, and what Kimberly was preaching on is biblical. It's absolutely, it's biblical. It is an abomination. It is a sin. And the word that I had just read just now, when we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, when we look at Rome, Rome fell because of um, the same old spirit. The thing is, is that it comes in a form where, okay, you think it's all flamboyant and stuff. Then when... Um, when people start getting raped, I mean, we had this thing going around in D.C. with a white van and all of these guys jumping out and raping these men. And then now all of a sudden you got the gay guy, the, the, the they, they want to have sexual relationships with a younger boy. I mean, this stuff starts going. Then people say, well, since you can have sex with the same sex, then I want to have sex with my animal. Now, if you want to do this, then I want to marry my brother. I mean, sin is a sin and it will bleed way for more sin. So in the day and time that we are living in, the attack was not on Kim Burrell. The attack was on church. So I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ as my savior. I believe that what this Bible says is true. And in it, I have to preach it in the Bible by it, right? And I know I'm not, um, I'm not perfect. So I ask God to forgive me for my sins. But when you sit up there and say that what I'm doing is nothing wrong with it, then that's on a whole nother level. Kim, Kim Burrell was in church and now she's being ostracized because of what she was preaching in the church. This is an attack on the body of Christ. This is an attack on church. And then you got these so-called gospel singers. You should have never did that. All y'all need to step down. Every last one of y'all. And I'm right with that woman too. I'm not going to support none of these gospel singers. I'm not doing any of Nobody going to speak up about this. I don't need you to lukewarm it. What are you going to say to a person if you got two minutes to tell them that they're going to go to hell? You got two minutes to tell them. How are you going to tell them? Because somebody's not going to live tomorrow. Somebody's going to get hit by a bus. And I said this. That the worst thing in the world could be in hell, okay? And Mona not going to apologize because your feelings is hurt. I don't need to be on no Ellen show. I don't need to, you know, I've had a relationship um, long enough to know that God is my creator. And this is what his word states. He has divine order, okay? I'm going to give you a prime exa example if y'all don't understand, okay? Let me tell you what this sin does. It cuts the seed off from you being fruitful and multiplying. That's said we got three islands. And I was just telling my God sister about this. You put six couples on one island. Man, woman, man, woman. Six couples. You put six couples of women on, the, on that second island. You put six couples of men on that third island. In the next 50 years, who's producing? I don't want, I don't want to hear, but we can adopt and all this. I'm just talking about the very purpose right then and there. Kim Burrell, keep on preaching. Keep on doing what you're doing. They blackballing and all of this, honey. You got more people out here that support you than what they showing on YouTube and in the media, okay? And I don't look at Ellen DeGeneres. I'm, I don't. For what? I don't look at energy. And she showed her hatred by by basically looking at what she preached. And um, Barack Obama, this is all going to fall on his hands because you opened the door for this. You opened the door for this. And now all of a sudden, y'all ready to um, y'all ready to kill the messenger. Nah, Kim, you got a lot of people that got your back. I'm going to tell you one thing about this woman. She got me through a rough time in my life. A lot of people are not going to like what I say, but I don't care. Because at the end of the day, I only, I am only 
Um, there's only one God I serve. I don't serve you. I don't need you to be my friend. I don't need you to hit like on my channel because I'm telling you that that is a sin. Is It is an abomination and that you need to drop that sin. You need to repent of that sin and go with, go with God. Go with God. What they don't want to show you is all of the people that's being delivered from that. But that man that was out there talking about, you the reason why I mean ignorant. But see, this is what happens. When, when you have a generation of ignorant people that come up, then they start voting for ignorant people. I mean, we saw what they did with Jesus. Jesus said this, they prosecuted me. They're going to prosecute you. Now, remember when they went to the king and they, and they wanted to, um, they wanted to crucify Jesus and they went to the king and the king was just like, man, I don't know what y'all want me to do with this. And he even told the crowd, do y'all want me to release a murderer for exchange in Jesus? I mean, Jesus was innocent, didn't do anything. And these Pharisees in the crowd was like, yes, I don't know if it was Barnabas, I forgot who the guy was. It was like, yes, release him, release him. Now, he a murderer. He done run around and killed everybody. You want to release him and take an innocent, our savior. Okay, you want to kill him because evil.